Welcome to the Lowdown on Physics. This is the first screencast in a series that is covering interactions of light and matter. This is one of the core topics for Unit 4 VCE Physics. Alright, first let's just uh, put some context into it to help us understand what we're looking at and where we're going. Um, basically, light's been described as both particle-like and wave-like. And the electron also has been described as having wave-like properties under certain conditions. So we've had different ways of thinking not only about light but also about matter as uh, time's progressed. So the ideas are explored using both experimental evidence and then conceptual models. So thinking about it and trying to explain it using an analogy or a model. So the development of all these ideas um, alongside developments in technology have uh, just not actually led to a, an exact answer of what light is. So we're going to just explore and, and see what we do know about light already. Okay, so let's uh, recall what we might have learnt in Unit 2 and that's about different types of waves. So we have two main categories. Firstly there's mechanical waves. Those are the ones that require a medium. So you've got a transverse wave, it's kind of like a Mexican wave uh, where the particles move perpendicular to the direction it travels. And we've got longitudinal waves uh, such as sound waves. Then of course the opposite or the, the other variety that there is to mechanical is electromagnetic and these are the ones that don't require any medium so they'll travel through space. So what exactly is um, a wave? Effectively, it is an energy carrier. It carries and transports energy. So the energy gets transferred, but not the matter. Whatever's carrying the wave doesn't, doesn't continue on with it. It's just the energy gets transferred or trans, uh, passed along. Some other things that we'd have done in Unit 2 are would be describing function, features of the waves. So first one is frequency, that's how many waves pass a point per second. So it kind of tells us how quickly the waves are moving past. The SI units for frequency are Hertz. Period, that's how long it takes for a single wave to pass a point. Effectively that's the inverse of frequency, so T equals 1 over F. And then wavelength, that's the distance between two adjacent points. Generally we would uh, look at the distance between two different crests or two different troughs, because uh, they're the easiest points to identify on, on the wave. And generally we measure that in meters. And lastly, it's measuring that the speed that it's moving at, or the velocity of the wave, we've got V equals F lambda. Now where does this F lambda come from? Effectively, uh, it's just the speed equation. We've got distance, or the, the, the length of one wave, divided by time, which is the period of that wave, or 1 over T equals F. So they're actually the same equation represented differently. Alright, models. The question is why do we use models? I guess it's, it's effectively a way of explaining something that we can't either directly observe or directly explain using things we're familiar with. So we, we're building an analogy, it's, it's, it's uh, explaining it because it's like this or it does something like that we've, we're very familiar with. So we have two different models, I mentioned them just earlier, for light and that is the particle model and the wave model. So we'll look at those fairly in depth over the next couple of weeks. So finding a suitable model. So we, we're going to go back a few years in history. Basically in the 17th century, what we knew was that light travelled in straight lines when it was in a uniform medium, that it obeyed the law of reflection and it obeyed the law of refraction. So that was known you know, a few hundred years ago. But since then, we've come up with some new developments. So that's 
really what this can, we're going to be looking at in this topic. Okay, so the law of reflection. Let's just quickly recall the law of reflection. And that is that the angle that it strikes a plane at, or whatever it strikes an object at, it will reflect at that same angle. So the light comes in, angle of incidence, and goes out, the same angle of reflection. Now note, incidence and reflection are always measured to the normal, perpendicular to the surface. Doesn't you know, make a massive difference in reflection, but it will when you try to do the calculations for refraction. Now, reflection can be modeled by both the particle model, as in acting like a, a particle where it bounces off an object and goes, so similar to a billiard ball bouncing off and reflecting into the, the hole there. We've got the same angle of incidence, angle of reflection happening there. Or it can behave like wave reflection. So basically you've got a series of wave fronts that come in and they're going to strike a barrier. So we'll have a look at a diagram. Basically the law of reflection is going to be obeyed. So we've got all these wave fronts coming in. As they're reflecting, they're going out here. So if we draw a line perpendicular or a line in the direction of the travel, we get this angle of incidence here and an angle of reflection that's going out. And those two points are equal. Refraction. So you should be familiar with uh, the concept of refraction. Even if you've never studied it before, you'd have come across it in everyday life. That is where light appears to bend as it passes from one transparent medium into another. Uh, important that they're of different optical density. This is why when you see or look down at your legs when you're standing in a swimming pool, they may, depending on your angle, appear really short. Uh, that's because of this light sort of bending. And the result, or the cause of that, I suppose, is the change in velocity as it moves from one medium to the other. And what we need to remember, particularly when it comes to doing drawings, is that light bends towards the normal when it slows down. So when it goes into something that is of greater optical density, it will bend towards the normal. And then vice versa when it goes the other way. So recalling Snell's law. That is that sine i over sine r is a constant, and it's also equal to n2 over n1, which is the refractive indices. And two other ways that we could look at it is the change, the differences in velocity, or the ratio of the velocities, or the ratio of wavelengths. And I just got an email. Alternatively, we could represent it. This is the form that I find it more useful in. Uh, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. So the angle and the medium that it is in always go together. And just another concept to review that will be useful in this topic is the idea of interference. And that's when you have two waves of the same type in the same medium at the same time. Okay, they can result by either producing a bigger wave or they can interfere and actually cancel each other out. So if we have a look here, two waves are in phase, so the peaks line up. So the result is the peaks add together and we get a wave that's twice as big. However, here they're out of phase by 180 degrees. And the result is that where there's a peak, it corresponds with a trough, it cancels out and produces no wave. So that's constructive interference and destructive interference. Alright, I think we're ready to get stuck into this topic now.